Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly roundup for all the latest Nikon news and all other announcements that we found interesting. It's Constantine here. This is Becky. I wanted to tell you that it's nice and sunny in London and that was the case about three minutes ago, but it's pouring rain now. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Is that <laughs> because Nikon just dropped a teaser three for Maybe. Nikon Z9? <laughs> do you think that's related to the weather? It's quite possible. So Nikon Z9 teaser just dropped, so we're going to do a quick dissection of it with Becky right now and we'll get it out as soon as possible so hopefully it will be with you very shortly and then do join us for the rest of the podcast which will come out a day later yes we're gonna film it all now though just for you <laughs> absolutely just you and you us so first up it says z9 is coming teaser three that's the name of the video that Nikon have dropped okay so the question I have for you is z9 coming then I think it's coming okay is the teaser three about autofocus it's about speed and autofocus i reckon if you watch it and we'll go through it bit by bit here you will see that one of the biggest points that they're trying to make is that it's fast mm -hmm. and that it can autofocus so speed 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 yeah okay so it looks like the autofocus is really good, but what they want to try to tell us that it's not just autofocus, it's actually the tracking of subject and motion. And obviously this teaser is based on a lot of action, isn't it? It is. So this is kind of sporty. We've got people running, playing tennis. We've got some motocross. We've got dirt bikes. We've got cars. It, it tells us a number of things. So first up, we have a quick look at the camera. It doesn't tell us anything else. A part of that FTZ adapter is attached to the camera. I wonder what the reason is, Bex. Do you think because they don't have long lenses for Z-mount? I mean, I'm sure there's that, yes. But I don't know why they would put an FTZ on there. I don't think that they did that intentionally. That's my thought. But It was just there. It was just there. Just happened to be there. That particular photographer wanted to shoot with his beloved, whatever, 400 f2.8 prime. And so he had to use an FTZ. He spent a lot of money on it. That's my, that's my logic. Yeah, if you spend the money, you got to use it, isn't it? Exactly. That's true. Well, let's move to the next one. So we got a motocross section and this guy's coming in, right? Yeah. So it looks like it doesn't track the motorcyclist, but it tracks the bike itself. It does. The little square, the little yellow square is over the top of the bike. So that tells us that much like the rumors suggested, there is vehicle tracking. Vehicle tracking, exactly. So it, was, it wasn't car tracking per, per, per se, it was vehicle tracking. So we've got motorcycle here. In one of the few clips next, we will have a car. That's right. I wonder if it's going to track planes or boats or trains, you know, all sorts of vehicles. Planes, trains and automobiles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's quite possible. I mean, I think the rumors sites originally suggested it was going to be car tracking. Mm -hmm. And I think that that it, the fact that the box is over the, the bike means that we'd call it now vehicle track. Yeah, they're going to say, if it's got wheels, we track it. Yeah. Here we go. Planes don't have wheels. They do. I suppose they do. They do. <laughs> they're not like in Flintstones where they get taken off. <laughs> they run know. it. Run run with feet. I yeah. mean, I can imagine, yeah, all the passengers put their feet out and then... Run. <laughs> and then they have a massive steak from Flintstones <laughs> on a plane. Um, okay, well, the next one up, we're going to have a, a tennis player. Obviously, here we've got the night trek in here. Now, the thing that I like about this is the fact that her movement is super erratic. Like, she ducks to the left and then she jumps when she hits that ball with the racket. That's true. And the racket goes across the face. It does. Yeah. And the whole time, the little square stays over her eyes. That's true. Back in the day, we used to have a 3D tracking yeah. on cameras like D5 and D6, and that would track the subject by color. In this case, it generally, you would set the focusing point on a t-shirt of the tennis player, not the eye. Now, what it tells me here, it's not only tracks it by eye, you can also see it because of the baseball cap, the, the face is in the shadow as well. Yeah, it's true. Which means it's a low contrast situation. It still continues to track the tennis player on the eye and doesn't switch. The question that a lot of people ask, can you switch between the eyes? I don't see why not. I'm sure you can. What it tells me here though, that it's all happening so fast, the same as with motorcycles, mm. it continues to track it. There is pretty much no delay in that focusing square movement. It's pretty much there with the subject. Yeah, it is. I don't see it drop off at any point during that whole sequence. That's very impressive. Absolutely. And then, yeah, the next shot we have runners jumping over obstacles. Mm -hmm. Again, here we have subject going from left to right. We generally, for a lot of autofocus cameras, the tracking from left to the right side, etc., is generally quite straightforward because mm -hmm. the distance change is not that bad. In this case, 
the lens is focused quite closely. Yeah. So you still need to continue to track it. Again, the question a lot of people ask is, can you switch between the eyes of the different uh, runners? I would assume so. I mean, I don't know if the camera chooses the eye for you and then you consciously make the decision to move it off or whether it's one of those like let go and then refocus and then it chooses. That's it, true. To be to be confirmed. But if you look at Z6 and Z7 cameras, yes. when we have face and eye tracking in, in, enabled in the camera, when there are at least more than one people in the frame, it will have either eye square or face square on one subject in yellow, mm. which means it's the active subject that is tracking, but it also will have a square in white on, the, on another face. Mm -hmm. And then if you press the joystick to the left or right, you switch between the faces. You know, I've never used that. That's the thing, because it's generally, it's not as fast as we would want it to be. Yeah, I usually find that by the time I focus on the subject, if it's not who I want, then I'm just like, okay. Exactly. <laughs> but what it tells me here, that's, that's my guess, is that you probably will be able to do exactly the same thing totally. Yeah, go from left to right. But because the tracking is so fast, it's actually may become a lot more usable. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Okay. So if I a like lot that. of people ask, can you switch? I think you can just looking at the performance of uh, the six and the seven cameras, but much, much faster. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so after we have the sprinters and it follows them going over their obstacles, then we have our cars going around the racetrack. Now, this is kind of weird because it doesn't seem to have the box over the whole vehicle. Mm -hmm. It actually seems to be focusing on the headlights. Yes. Or one side of the headlights. Is that the eye tracking for cars? Yeah, it's the car's eyes, like yeah. Lightning McQueen. It's like... That's true. <laughs> That's the only reference I have, <laughs> is the Pixar cars. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't un quite understand how that works, but you do see at the beginning of the sequence that the little square moves from the headlights that are most in view mm -hmm. to suddenly the ones that come into view as the car makes its way around the racetrack, so... Yeah, my thinking behind this is when you look at the beginning of the frame, I think the left headlights are slightly at the front. Like slightly closer. Exactly, slightly closer to the frame. And then when the car turns, it shifts to the other side because now that side becomes closer. Mm. Now, because we have vehicle tracking, which is pretty much confirmed, of course, it doesn't show the whole box on the car, which I thought that would be the case. Me too. It goes on the headlights, I guess it's something to do with the algorithm, with the tracking algorithm. Right. But it is very interesting. And again, if you look at the speed, how quickly it tracks the light, because cars are moving really fast. So fast. It's not the runners. I mean, they, they run fast, but the cars are moving much faster. So, so if you look at that, again, it's almost a real-time tracking. But yeah, it, it's moving so much faster. If you think about it, it's probably just choosing the closest object mm -hmm. and it's just, yeah, tracking the headlights in this case. The next one up, we got a bit of a football game. And it's a very very split, like very short sequence on the football game. Yeah. You see the the photographer goes from one player to another player. The box shifts from IAF to face AF and then it switches over to the photographer who is a left eye shooter, I'd like to point out. <laughs> well, I'm glad you impo you, you've you noted the important things. Baby. But actually the shift from eye tracking to face tracking is similar to current Z cameras mm. where if camera can't see the eyes or the subject is slightly further away, it basically the square creases to cover the face. And as soon as it can recognize the eyes again, it will become smaller and will track the eye. In this case, the player slightly turns away. Yeah. So his eyes are no longer in the frame. So you can see the profile of the player. Mm -hmm. And that at this moment, it switches to a big square on the face tracking. So again, similar behavior as a current Z6 and Z7 cameras, however, much, much faster, pretty much real time. Yeah, absolutely. Then we get a glimpse of the photographer. Then finally, we get that split second view of the Z9 again, doesn't show us anything, but we get the sprinter running towards us. This is instead. very important. This is probably the biggest sort of sticking point that we have on current Z system cameras yep. is that when the subject is running towards you that's when your tracking generally really lets you down it's not fast enough to keep up with the subject now that's being said we're both using z6s z7s first gen cameras z6 2 z7 2 you've tried and tested it's better it's still let's say not as fast as this. Yeah, so this really indicates that actually when the subject's moving towards you, you're not gonna lose focus, which is what we come to expect. Yeah. Here's a couple of examples that I generally have encountered. Fashion walk. Yes. You generally have photographers, so when the model's walking towards you, yeah. they not running, they're moving quite fast. Yeah. So that's where you need to have fast tracking again because the distance changes so dramatically. It's not the same as going diagonally or from left to right side, etc. Yeah. Another option is 
Tilly, you know, when we test the 7200 lens with Tilly and my pup, she would run from me and then way towards me. Obviously, she would run a little faster. Yes. And again, if you look at this sprinter here, he runs a lot faster. And it seems that camera is tracking it real time again. And then we hear the shutter clicks. Yes. And those are? Very fast. <laughs> yeah, like it is serious machine gun. I thought that the D6 was machine gun speed because it's 14 frames per second. Mm -hmm. This is faster. It yeah. sounds faster. So do you reckon 14 and a half? 15 maybe 15 yeah something 20, like that 30 could be 40. i've heard i've heard lots of rumored numbers and i i honestly don't know what this is but it's fast i mean it's at least d6 speed but i'm expecting it would probably be faster because it's a mirrorless camera you don't actually need to have a mechanical shutter mechanism. That's right, yeah. So it could be even faster still. So do you reckon it's electronic shutter and actually what you hear is the, just the sound that is built into the camera? I guess, I don't know, actually. I mean, that sounds like a mechanical shutter. That's true. Yeah. It's just, it's way faster than the D6, isn't it? When you listen to it like that. D6 can retire, I think. Wow. Had a good life. Golly gosh. Ultimately, it sounds like it's going to be a very versatile camera. We've seen it work for sports and wildlife. We've seen, what was the first one? It works for sort of fashion, fashion. With the white dots on the eyes. <laughs> fashion portraiture. And now Nikon is saying, look, it's great for sports of all kinds. Okay. Are you excited, Becky? I am excited. I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh, I mean, I assume that there's going to be another teaser next week because yes. uh, they well, did... I'll, with the DF, they did four, right? That's true. Well, I'll tell you more. So according to Nikon Rumors, they say Z9 will be announced on 28th of October plus minus one day. Right. So that's like around next week-ish. So that's around next week. That's next Thursday. So if we have a teaser next Wednesday yeah, and then the announcement the next couple of days, then yeah. it's going to be it. Yeah. Wow. All that uh, all that build up. Absolutely. I think I just might take a couple of days off, you know, go fishing. Uh, you won't be able to, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'll come back and it's going to be a whole new world. Yeah. The exactly. Before and after Z9. Anyway, this is very exciting. Do come join us for the rest of the podcast, which will come out later on. But thanks for watching us and hit that like and subscribe button if you can and leave us a review as well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.